Hello. Today I want to talk about the uh, Check64, which is an uh, assembly kit which is available at the uh, Forum64. And uh, I'm going through the main functions of this uh, small device and uh, the main purpose of it. And um, well, yeah, so the Check64 is basically a um, cartridge which is um, used to check whether your C64 main board is uh, working properly or to detect if not uh, what's what's going to be the problem and um, as i said it's an assembly kit so it uh, comes in well uh, a pcb and um, all those um, small uh, things on the on the board and you have to assemble it by your own or well you can ask a friend um, whether he's um, willing to do so and uh, that's the main purpose why i have this uh, device today because I did the same for someone else in the Forum 64. I assembled a Check 64 for him. And um, I will uh, post a link to uh, my first assembly of a Check 64. And you can find the link somewhere on top of the screen. And um, so let's uh, well talk about um, main components. So as I said, it's a small uh, cartridge which is um, connected to your cartridge port, expansion port of your C64. And um, then um, you have um, two dongles, or actually you have three or five dongles. Well, and uh, these dongles are uh, connected to um, the, u the user port, which is uh, here, and the tape port, which is here. And then you have uh, the keyboard dangle and um, as you can see this um, keyboard dangle is uh, for the C64, the C128 uh, and the C128D but there are different connectors and uh, since we have a C64 uh, we're going to use this connection and uh, here you have to check um, that ground is in this corner so you have to connect this um, dangle like this put it on this and then uh, well let's connect the other stuff as well Oops, a little bit tight Go. and then uh, we have actually two dangles for the, the serial port so the IEC port the uh, one is for the for C64 and one is for the C128 and uh, so we're going to use this one and uh, here and um, as I said this is going to be uh, connected to the cartridge port and uh, without a case it's a little bit tricky to find um, the right position to connect this to the um, expansion port and last but not least uh, we have a cable and this cable is connected to this small test cartridge here and uh, we have two connectors for the control ports going to be connected here and here and another cable and this is for the tape port so that's basically the setup for the check 64 and um, if you have a closed c64 and you don't want to open it but you want to have a quick test of this device then you can uh, leave the um, keyboard connector, the keyboard dongle um, open or not connected and the test will run as well and um, as you can see on uh, the cartridge itself there is a small um, section with um, switches and here you can configure what uh, kind of test program you want to run on this Check uh, 64 and uh, maybe just for explanation purpose it's a little bit easier so as you can see, we have a, a C64 dead test as the first one, a C64 diag diagnostic um, test, a revision number, I'm going to talk about this quite soon, a uh, 1541 a di diagnostic uh, for testing your floppy drive, and as mentioned already, the C128 diagnostic test to test your C128. So and um here you have um those um, um 
settings for the for the small switches here and uh, depending on what you want to do uh, you have to select a certain configuration so this uh, is perhaps a little bit uh, cumbersome but uh, since there are different uh, rom files available uh, it is really important to have this uh, flexibility to select different options here and if you dig a little bit deeper into the functionality of the expansion port uh, you will see that there are different modes so you have either a game cartridge or a so-called um, dead test cartridge and um, they require different settings here and um, therefore it is um, quite okay that uh, it is uh, made like this and um, well as I said the main purpose of this uh, device is to check your C64 uh, whether it's working correctly and um, if not uh, what what's going to be default so and um, just to give you an example how it looks like uh, when it runs on a normal c64 so i expect that um, not getting to see any any mistakes or errors so let's switch this on and then we can uh, switch to the c Four picture as well and here you can see uh, it is already running so that's a diagnostic set and uh, it goes through a couple of functions like uh, testing the zero page the different uh, rams on on the board tests the PLA and um, in the in the lower section of the screen you can see the main chipsets of your C64 board. And um, this is a little bit confusing because if you look at a 469 board like we are using here right now, you will miss a couple of um, ICs depending on, on the numbers. So, and the main reason is that a couple of functions were implemented in this so-called uh, super IC. So if you use a 407 or 425 or 466 board, you will find all those uh, U's mentioned in the lower section of um, the screen. But on the 469, you have to refer which uh, ICs are combined in this uh, so-called super IC. So anyway, so the test runs well, endless. And uh, you can see in the, in the lower left hand corner the count. And if you want to have some kind of, uh, well, let's say a burn-in test or stress test or something like this, or if you have a C64 that behaves quite normally, but after a while it starts to do strange things, then you can uh, use this um, function to let it run for quite a while, and then you can see where the errors uh, start to appear. So, and um, as you can see, everything is fine on the board, so no errors were found. And um, just to give you a brief uh, explanation what's what's going on. So this check 64 um, is using the connectors to test several functions. And um, those functions were, I think, basically uh, developed by uh, Pomodoro itself. So there's a good documentation you can find on the internet. And um, basically, it's very interesting to see what's what's going to be checked on the board. And um, those those dangles and those connections are designed the way that um, they take a certain route through the main board, and um, therefore you can identify whether uh, one of the CIAs is broken and which one, and whether the SID is working, and if the wick is uh, doing what is supposed to be. And um, it is it's very, very good. And if you have a, let's say, a slightly broken board, it is really easy to find uh, the error or the, the broken part. And um, coming back to the different functions selecting uh, by, uh, selected by those switches, um, if you have a C64 that won't start at all, then you can use the so-called dead test. And uh, in some cases, um, you will see some kind of flashing border. So if the picture remains black, but the border is flashing, then this is uh, identifying a, a RAM issue, a RAM problem. And uh, depending on the number of um, flashes you can count, uh, you may identify which RAM is uh, broken. So as a first hint, it is very, very useful. So, 
And basically, well, you have to assemble this uh, by yourself or you find someone who is doing this for you. It is uh, actually quite easy because there are not that many um, components on, on the board. And um, the cables and all that stuff is uh, quite quickly made. And um, there are some there's there are some housings available as well. So I put my check 64 in this um, nice uh, transparent uh, case from uh, plexilaser.de, and uh, it's quite comfortable because if you use this on a normal C64, which is uh, still in in the case where the board is still in the case. Then you have the right uh, distance and it is really easy to attach to C64 and it is kind of, uh, well, let's say, protected. And um, as mentioned, there are several uh, ROM files available at uh, Forum64 and therefore you can um, use your, your EEPROM programmer to burn uh, your own version on, on, on this uh, EEPROM. So you can uh, use your uh, TL866 uh, like this one or you can use an uh, EEPROM programmer for the C64 itself. Then you have to place this uh, ROM file or this bin file on a disk drive. And then you can uh, burn this uh, ROM directly with your C64. It takes quite a while, so my recommendation is to use the, the TL866, which is quite a, a cheap device, and uh, it's always available on, on, on the internet, on eBay, and all that platforms. And um, if you buy this um, case or this housing for your cartridge, you can uh, get some additional handles as well, so that uh, those um, dangles are easier to handle because it's a little bit uh, tricky to to get this stuff connected when um, the board is still inside the case because then it's uh, almost um, aligned with with, uh, with the case and it's really a little bit hard to to to, to grab and um, to pull out so it's available for both uh, dangles so actually well that's basically all I have to say about the Check 64. It's a very useful device, and uh, if you buy some stuff on, on eBay quite frequently, or if you have a couple of uh, old stuff found somewhere on your attic, then um, you may want to have some checks on your on your hardware, and um, therefore it's really really handy and very easy to use. So I will post the link to the uh, forum as well, and um, well, I hope you had some fun and learn something during the video and as usual thanks for watching if you have any comments or something questions then feel free to use the comment section and uh, if you want to stay informed about uh, the next videos and the next stuff i'm doing feel free to subscribe i appreciate it thank you very much and bye bye